I didn't think there'd be vampires on campus. It must have been at about 40,000 feet when it happened. <gasps> what was that? You are the Slayer. One girl in all the world. Did anybody say that? Yeah. Guess what? I feel better. Guys, where are we? Hi, Pat. Hey, hi, Sammy. What do you, what do you, you look like you have a lot of notes there. What's going on? Yeah, so I started to take my Buffy notes this week, long form with a pen and paper, old school mm-hmm. style. Mm. And then I realized after three pages of Chicken Scratch, of which I cannot read, that it was a bad idea. And I abandoned the uh, form of long form and I took over with the laptop and started typing it out. Pat, how you been? <laughs> <laughs> I've been okay. How, I it's mean, been I've been great. Since we recorded. I've, I know. I, it has been a long time. How long has it been? Uh, well, my original notes for when I started um, watching this Buffy episode and taking notes was that our recording date was going to be August 20th. Oh, boy. And it is November 1st today. <laughs> wow. Okay. So we had a long pause because I got married. You did get married. Congratulations on Thank your nuptials. You. Thank you. We did a little backyard thing, you know, had to postpone the, the big sh- uh, shindig, which, of course, you'll be coming to next year. Of course. Um, unless, you know, this podcast really goes south, I suppose. <laughs> so, and what? So, and what happens? We end up in jail? Oh, and we, we, yeah, it could be. <laughs> they put us in podcast jail. You guys are the worst. Go to jail. Go to podcast jail. <laughs> I was thinking our friendship ends, but oh right, I guess that could always happen. That's a yeah, possibility. But I don't think so. I think we're good. We're good so far. So far. If you keep bringing uh, up Star Wars, though, I'll tell you what. <laughs> listen, I'm never the one who brings up Star Wars. <laughs> That's true. I don't think I bring it up, and then you go straight to Ewok, and and you don't want to hear about it. Things go south. But you know, you can't change me. But we can try. No, I'm a bad girl and you can't change me. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> uh, so so how does it feel to be married? Uh, it's pretty good. It's um, <laughs> It doesn't really feel that different. <laughs> yeah, We've been living alert. together. We bought a house before we got married. Yeah. So, you know, it's pretty much the same. Maybe it'll feel different when we do our taxes. I don't know. Maybe uh, if you get um, another G back in your taxes. That'd be great. G yeah. for great. Right. That would be great. It would be grand. <laughs> A grand. A grand. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's fun to call Dave my husband. Or that hub- is fun. Husband, it's as I way like to call better him. than fiance, way better than boyfriend. I know. It sounds so juvenile. I mean, fiance sounds like, oh, don't fancy. But yeah. I also took French, so I don't really mind it. You know, I have a little a little side of me that's like, you know, I, I want to be fancy. As I've said to you many times, I, you know, I, I have this belief that I'm part Amelie and part Mr. Bean, but I think it's like, you know, 90% Mr. Bean, 10% on the leaf, for, for being honest. <laughs> Even 10% is probably being generous. I think that's an accurate ratio. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it doesn't feel that different. I'm happy for you guys, and it's yeah, wonderful thanks. that you've joined the Married Club. Yeah, the cult of marriage. <laughs> the cult. You joined the cult. Yeah, it feels good. It's good. Yeah. You know, it's the only cult I really wanted to be part of. Uh, also, I signed the lease on. A, I have a studio space now for my businesses. Yeah. So those are those are kind of that's those are two big reasons why we haven't recorded because you know I was really busy with those things and you know I know you had a lot going on too. I did. Yep, I had lots of stuff going your on. Bathroom. Remodeling and... my bathroom. That's mostly tied up, though. I'll tell you what. It's so nice to have like a brand new bathroom down here. It's still missing a ceiling, but you can't win them all. Not in one year, at least. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait can 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 your wife just like look down from? No, from... it's not missing a floor above. It's just it doesn't have a finished Hello. ceiling. <laughs> I'm just imagining. <laughs> no, please you just t- <laughs> please tell me you've seen um. Oh my God! What? Why can't I think it? The money, money pit. pit. Yes, I I've seen the money pit. Love it's. I fucking love the money pit. Definitely, what you should watch if you just need a laugh. 
Tom Hanks is the best. But yeah, that's just what I imagine, like the scene where he's in the carpet. Or, you know, there's like a lot of times where things just fall through floors. <laughs> cool. Well, this is Kicking and Streaming. It's a podcast where me, Sammy, and my good friend here, Pat, Hello, Pat. Hi. <laughs> Hello, talk about... so formal. Hello. <laughs> we uh, are forcing each other to watch our favorite TV shows. I'm making Pat watch Buffy, and Pat is ma- making me watch Lost. And we talk about them and make weird references to <laughs> movies and <laughs> 80s music, mostly me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's what we do here. <laughs> that's that's the premise of the podcast. <laughs> if you've made it th- thus far, episode five, welcome. <laughs> yeah. Um. So should we just jump right in to Buffy? Yep. This is um season one, episode five. Never kill a boy on the first date. You know, that's good good advice, mm-hmm. you know, for, for life. Uh, original air date is March 31st, 1997. It was written by Rob Des Hotel. Uh, again, not sure if that's Are you saying that right? That. Des Hotel? It's Rob and mm-hmm. then D-E-S space Hotel. H-O-T-E-L. I mean. Okay. Yeah, I would say it the same way, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And Dean Batali, directed by David Semmel, uh, who directed four episodes between seasons one and three. Um, he's also done work for Dawson's Creek, Seventh Heaven, American Horror Story, HBO's Watchmen. Um, mm-hmm. And he was nominated for a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Directing for a Drama Series for directing the pilot episode of Heroes. Did you ever watch Heroes, Pat? I watched uh, maybe one season oh, so when good. it was in its heyday. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. So I just want to recap your predictions. So mm-hmm. you had some very oddly specific predictions. I did. <laughs> last episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but your, your longer term episode one prediction was that Buffy was going to face the master in the season finale, mm-hmm. likely after he builds up reinforcements, which he pulls from his blood well, mm. um, and that he will potentially have a love affair with Amy's mom <laughs> and make a vampire witch baby. <laughs> yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I doubt that there's going to be a big bad slash monster of the week crossover episode where they where they mix and match because I feel like they're so divided. Like they're completely different storylines almost. Mm. So you never know. Maybe uh, he could pull her out of the blood. Well, he could pull her out of the blood. Well, that would be awesome. I'd be really pumped up. You never know. So some of your other predictions, that was kind of just your main long-term prediction. Some of your other ones um, from last episode were that you, the eggs that they show at the end of um, episode four, the will eggs? come back yeah the egg the egg sack that was like eggs? in the you say eggs it, you say it funny eggs what eggs you say it funny eggs how do you say it eggs 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 you see, there you go <laughs> eggs. eggs eggs i don't know maybe it's a connecticut like, thing oh i got eggs and pains <laughs> you're a pain in my egg <laughs> I don't know. What, that, I don't what are know you what talking that about, is. you egg hag? <laughs> Shut up! I don't know what that is. I mean, ah, it's my a legs. Thing my legs. A and, thing. <laughs> my legs feel like they have a whole bunch of eggs on them. All right. You know what? You got egg on your face. So you said that the. <laughs> <laughs> you said that they're gonna come back in maybe one to two seasons. Mm-hmm. And we're just moving right on along after, mm-hmm. after that. Um, and you, you said that uh, you think Amy's mom, who's stuck in the cheerleading trophy, is also probably going to come back in, you know, a couple of seasons. Yeah. L- not likely in this season. Uh, you said that this episode will definitely be a big bad episode, i.e. the master, not a monster of the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, that Xander will keep getting friend zoned by Buffy. Probably nothing will ever really work out for them, but you know, maybe in a couple of in like three seasons, they might accidentally kiss, or or you know, something awkward will happen that causes them to kiss, but nothing's really going to come of it. Yep. 
The police will disappear and we won't see them again for another seven to eight episodes. And the real Mrs. French, the sweet old lady, <laughs> will come back at some point, but there will be a dark twist in her story. <laughs> because it's That's funny. the one I'm really hoping happens. <laughs> like out of all my predictions, that's you, the one I, I really, really want to What do you really want to happen with her? I just want her to, to come in and like, like just have a real hero moment where she shows up and either she's a complete creepo or she's a huge hero. Either mm-hmm. or, I'd be very happy. I just want to see like a spotlight shining on Mrs. French, the real okay. Mrs. French. Okay. Yeah. So those were your pr- predictions. That was a lot of predictions. What did that I take half the lot. show? <laughs> mean, <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, I was like, I don't know. We're going to get someone's backstory. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll re- I'll recap that before we get my very short not really predictions predictions when okay. we get to lost. <laughs> All right. So yeah, this episode you're correct. We do finally get back to the big big bad, the mo- uh master. Oh my god, words today. Yeah. This is going to be a challenge for me every episode. Yeah. I'm sorry. And we open with Buffy fighting the cemetery. You know, we kind of open with Buffy fighting the cemetery and she says, Mm -hmm. we haven't been properly introduced. I'm Buffy and your history. (laughs) (laughs) And then she dusts him. She dusts him. Good. You get in the lingo. Yeah, I got it. Uh, Giles criticizes her methods of taunting Mm -hmm. them uh, instead of plunge and move on, plunge and move on. Right. Uh, And then he discovers that this vampire she dusted left behind a ring. Yes. Uh, so then we cut to the master who's reading uh, some prophecy as, you know, he loves to do. He's he's really rather a lot like Giles in this yeah. regard. But he's holding more of like a church yeah. ceremony. It's sort of like a, yeah, it's like a church like a, session like a for gospel. vamps. Yeah. Yeah. It does kind of have that feeling. Um, mm-hmm. Who says vampires don't like to go to church? <laughs> Yeah, so he talks about the anointed and how the anointed yes. is coming. Yep, so he says that the anointed um, is a pawn of the master who the slayer will not recognize, but he will lead her into hell. Mm-hmm. Um, five will die and out of their ashes, the anointed will rise. The anointed will be anointed will be my greatest weapon against the slayer. And then he tells, you know, his minions, you know, that they better not fuck it up, as RuPaul would say. Mm-hmm. It, he doesn't actually say don't fuck it up, but that's what RuPaul would say. Right, yeah. The CW wouldn't allow that. Or the WB, no, whatever WB. it was on. WB. Yeah, frog with a hat, as you said. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> he has the ultimate say on censorship. Yes. And he's like, not not mm. today. No, You'll no. You'll try to sneak right another. my top hat. <laughs> Hello, my lady. Na, 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 na. Isn't that the song that he sings? <laughs> yep, that's it. Okay. <laughs> So we're back from the intro music. Giles and Buffy are in the library and Buffy's the one that discovers the ring's meaning. Yeah. She says it's a symbol that represents the order of Aurelius, uh, but they're interrupted by a hunky and apparently well-read and sensitive Owen Thurman. Yeah. Um, who carries around Emily Dickinson as a security blanket. Mm. I feel like it's all for show. Yeah. I'm not buying it. All right. Well, so Willow describes him (laughs) as solitary, (laughs) mysterious, and that he can brood for a solid 40 minutes. Yeah, again. He's sensitive yet manly. Again, not buying it. It's all for show. Not buying it. It's all for show. You look at that guy. The guy, he looks like Rob Gronkowski. He wants to catch a football, and he's just burying his feelings deep down inside. (laughs) 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 He's the guy, Rob Gronkowski, used to play for the. Patriots and now he he plays with Tom Brady uh on the Buccaneers down in Florida. I don't know football, Pat. All right. Well, you got to google Come it on. after because you'll be like, "Hey, that's Owen, the guy from the All show." Right. I'll look it up. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to I'm going to look at it. You got to look at it. Um Buffy decides to stay with him at lunch just as Cordelia has the same thought and she kind of hip checks Buffy and makes her spill her food. Mhm. She's such a bitch. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but Buffy handles it super well, which, you know, she's she definitely. Though? Well, kind. I mean, she's a better woman than I am. I would have been like, fuck you, bitch. But, well, again, WB, I guess you can. Right, can't. The frog would be all over that. WB wasn't censoring my high school experiences. That's right. She oh. she does call, What does she call her a cow or something? Well, she says, oh, boy, Cordelia's hips are wider than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> so... 
Again, I feel like this is this is not a good look for Buffy though in 2020 because she's like uh, she's mm. sort of like doing like a fat shaming thing here. She's like, mm, she's fat. You don't want to be with her. Well, but look at me. I mean, I don't. She's not really. I think she's just saying that. But that was like a put like, down. Yeah, because she yeah. was like, oh, she bumped into me because her hips are so wide. You know, like right, which is a bad thing in I, the 90s. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I I guess like I just love it because I'm like, man, that's clever. <laughs> like I would have just been like, fuck you, and walked away, <laughs> or thrown my milk at her, which is something I guess I've done a couple times. Now, when you were at school, did you get the regular milk, or did you always get the chocolate milk? Oh, I got the regular milk. Or were you the weirdo and got the strawberry milk? Oh no. Yeah, there's a few. I kids love who strawberry, strawberry, but milk. like the fake strawberry stuff is gross. Yeah, it's like all sugar, all strawberry pink sugar. Strawberry milk stuff. Ugh. No, I got regular. I don't even think we had strawberry milk at my high school. My high school was broke ass. Pat, <laughs> <laughs> think, we can't we afford probably... <laughs> strawberry carton milk. <laughs> I don't even think we had chocolate milk as an option. What? Do they have this in your high school? <laughs> Yeah. You still had strawberry and chocolate milk in your high you school? You could get, uh, actually, I don't know if they had strawberry. I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure they did, but I know for sure they had the regular milk and they had the chocolate milk cartons. Mm. And everybody got chocolate milk. Well, also, let me just make the point. Apparently, Cordelia has given up on her medically prescribed lunches. Oh, right. I forgot that was But I guess maybe I would, too, after finding Dr. Gregory in the fridge. Cool. So Cordelia, <laughs> tries, she hip checks Buffy, yeah. tries to invite Owen to the bronze, uh, and he's not interested in going with her. Mm-hmm. Um, but he asks Buffy to go with him instead. Boom. Yeah. Suck it, Cordy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Giles, uh, but Giles brings that idea to a screeching halt when he tells Buffy that the prophecies of Aurelius says that the anointed, a warrior, will rise tonight. Yes. Buffy, not so happy with Giles's calculations. So right. he says, all right, I'll just jump in my time machine, go back to the 12th century and ask the vampires to postpone their ancient prophecy for a few days while you take in dinner and a show. <laughs> not super good at Giles. No, that's pretty good. That's better oh, than thanks. my Giles. <laughs> What's your Giles? I don't even want to attempt it. In my, <laughs> <laughs> my uh, impressions don't do well on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um buffy says okay at this point you're abusing sarcasm yeah so giles presses upon buffy the importance of stopping the anointed from reaching the master ending with a serious and impassioned tonight we go into battle <laughs> smash cut to them sitting in a graveyard <laughs> at night looking bored <laughs> and she's wearing like a nice tiger jacket uh-huh. it's like a, it's like a tiger print jacket yeah. with a hood on and mm-hmm. she's just like sitting there like do 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 yeah <laughs> that that was a great smash cut i know i love it <laughs> that's like oh so so good so he you know giles is like oh, i think i may have miscalculated so he lets <laughs> yeah. buffy off the hook to go to the bronze yep uh warning her about dating while having a secret identity so she mm-hmm. says in that case i won't wear my button that says i'm the slayer ask me how <laughs> which is actually funny because that's a reference that i made in episode one Mm -hmm. um because i knew i was like i'm pretty sure that she says this at some point during this show and here it is there's one part of this scene when they're sitting in the uh graveyard that i was screaming at the screen because giles (laughs) makes a perfect pun Mm -hmm. he says grave danger (laughs) they'll be in grave danger and they're Mm -hmm. sitting in a graveyard Boom. And there is n- there is nobody talks about it. He just says grave danger. It's not said for he a laugh. He doesn't look. Giles doesn't need the It's on applause. Buffy to point out the pun. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need the applause. He probably wouldn't even like it if he I don't even think it was, it was a pun. <laughs> I don't even think the writers knew that it was a pun. I don't even oh, think I'm the sure director saw it coming. They're just like I'm grave sure danger we're sitting in graveyard. I don't see it. <laughs> But totally me, I was like, grave danger, one, you guys. grave danger. <laughs> <laughs> you know oh, us in puns. I love a good pun. It's hard to not to not actually watch these with you <laughs> because I feel like we'd both be like, ah! <laughs> yeah, after, like grave danger. Did you hear grave danger? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God! Beautiful, beautiful, Giles. We love you. 
Uh, so then Giles reads the same thing the master did. Five shall die from their ashes. The anointed will rise, saying he's sure it was tonight. And then we cut to a bus and an mm -hmm. interaction between a young boy and a super intense guy with a southern accent. Yeah. You will and, be judged. Yeah. <laughs> he's fucking creepy. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty creepy. I actually meant uh, to look up the actor because he looked pretty familiar. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't have that info for you. Yeah. The, right uh, here, so. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, then we cut to the bronze and Owen dancing with Cordelia. Womp, womp. <laughs> right, yeah. That was, Buffy sees that was a bummer. She's like, oh, bye. Oh, you know what's so funny? I'm looking at my handwritten notes here. Yeah, I can it, hear them shuffling. Yeah, it says, the bronze, Cordelia dances with Owen. Womp, womp. <laughs> You're ridiculous. writing in my sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> We're two peas in a goddamn pod. <laughs> and mine yeah. just has a sad face. <laughs> it's like you're reading my notes. Womp uh, womp. I'm not. I'm not cheating off of you, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even see them. They're way down here. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, so vamps so attack the bus, the shuttle bus. Yeah, so back at the bus, the intense Southern guy spouting a prophecy sounding like, you know, a lot like those. those <laughs> I, I thought he sounded like those cuckoo crazy people who shout Bible <laughs> verses on the street. <laughs> I don't yeah. I don't even seen that much up here, but I, I've seen it every time I've gone down to New Orleans. There's always someone shouting Bible verses in the streets. Okay. Like for a long period of time. They're not yeah. just like. I know. feel like I've seen my fair share of that. Yeah, on the um, a figure appears on the road. The driver honks, brakes hard, uh, but he hits the figure, swerves into a sign, a telephone pole. Everyone in the bus seems okay, just kind of shaken up. The driver gets out to check on the person he hit who reaches up and grabs him. And then vampires jump in and feed on the passengers. Like oh, yeah. Said. Feeding frenzy. Mm-hmm. They, mm -hmm. they are filling up <laughs> that <Yeah>. night. <laughs> I don't know why that, that hit you. Uh, I don't know. It's just funny. It's funny. The way you said it there. Filling up. Filling up. <laughs> uh, next day yeah. at school, Buffy tells Xander she left the bronze after seeing um, Owen with Cordelia, and she's mopey about it. Um, Owen shows up, asks her out again for that night, assuring her that he's not into Cordelia. You know, he says she's kind of grabby, and then he gives her his watch. Oh, wait. You skipped over a part. One oh. of my favorite parts here, when um, Buffy and Xander are walking through the hall mm -hmm. and they're sort of talking and Buffy's sort of losing it. She's like, I feel like everyone's oh. staring at me. <laughs> and then she just turns to some guy who's walking by and she's like, yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> she's like, that's right. I have no life. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move it along. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's, I've definitely had those days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a regular occurrence in high school. I feel like. Yeah. You feel like everybody's looking at you. Yeah. And Xander's like, okay, Buffy. <laughs> He's like, okay, let's move it along here. <laughs> um, and then uh, as you predicted, he totally gets friend zoned. <laughs> Always. Like, this is Xander's move. <laughs> yeah. She's like, they're, you know, like moping about Owen. Then Owen comes up and is like, let's hang out tonight. And then she's like, oh, Owen. And Xander's there the whole time. Like, yeah, great. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. No, Xander. Aww, Xander. So then, um, you know, Buffy kind of runs in and is like, J you know, like, oh, e everything's fine, right? It's probably going to take you a couple of days, right? Like, so tonight's good. Great. Bye. And then kind of runs off. Um, and then we see the master again, who says his minions to, did well. You know, they, they really fueled up. Uh, and he will soon have a mighty ally. Buffy gets Willow and Xander's opinions on what to wear that night on her date with Owen. Um, and of course, Xander the whole time tries to sabotage her and then tries to look at her while she's changing. Not cool, bro. But I was also like, make him go outside the room. That's weird. I would never change with a guy friend in the room. Especially Xander. I mean, he's mm -hmm. already been kind of a creep. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, then the door rings. But it is Giles, not Owen, and he's relaying the news about the car crash that killed five, which might be the prophecy. Wait, let's Remind... go back. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. I have two bullet points, and I'm, I was trying to figure out where you were in the show. Oh, sorry. Um, so 
there's one part where they're talking about I think it's when Buffy and um Buffy and Owen and Xander are in the hallway talking about going the, like, to the bronze scene. again. Yeah. Yeah. I think Buffy asks like who you want to go with me or you want to go like something like that and then mm-hmm. he says, "Well, we couldn't fight the chess club, but they drink and start fights." <laughs> 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 I thought that was pretty funny. And then also when uh, um, Xander's trying to help uh, dress Buffy, he goes, ah, uh, here, no, you don't want to wear that nice dress here. And then he pulls out a giant Parker. overcoat and yeah. he says, here, here's a nice comfy overcoat and uh, a ski cap. <laughs> Ear flaps. flaps will bring out your eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that made me laugh pretty hard too. <laughs> Thank goodness Willow is there too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Xander. It's not obvious at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh yeah, so that is that's what is happening. And then the doorbell rings and Giles mm-hmm. is like, look, five people died. This is probably the prophecy. Um, and you know, it's kind of like, you know, having a social life as a slayer is not the best idea. Um yeah. and Buffy goes, if the apocalypse comes, beep me. Um, <laughs> right, she's got a like, beeper. Yeah, so because like Owen shows up, and while you know Giles and Buffy are sort of talking in hushed tones about the prophecy, and Buffy's trying to put off Giles so she can go on this date, um, Xander and Willow have sort of pulled Owen to the side, and you know Xander's like, she doesn't, you know, don't even, she doesn't like to, she doesn't like to kiss, don't even look at her, don't even touch her, like that kind of thing, mm-hmm. and Willow's like, Xander, right. um, yeah, so then. Super nineties. If the apocalypse comes, beep me. Yeah, um, which is like one of the one of the big Buffy quotes that's like everywhere. I love that it's still everywhere, even though like beepers are not a thing. I don't know. Maybe they're a thing still. But did you have a beeper? No, I never had a beeper. I had a beeper. What? Why? Yep. What? What's so important? I I don't know. I think it was like a hand me down. Like I think my mom had a beeper and then Mm -hmm. she got a cell phone and I think she still had like two months left on her contract or something with the beeper. I didn't even know that beepers had a contract. I'm making this up. I don't know (laughs) what the deal is. I'm just, I'm presuming how it worked, but I had the beeper and I'd go out skateboarding. Like a pay, pay, it was like a pay as you beep plan. Maybe. And then she would beep me when like dinner was ready or something. So I'd be out (laughs) skateboarding and be beep, 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 beep. And then I'd check it. That's kind of handy. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, it's time to go home. Yeah, it's pretty cool. She didn't have to like, you know, scream out the door, Patrick. Yeah, well, I was pretty far, you know, Patrick, I was downtown meat somewhere. Meatloaf. <laughs> what? Me? Oh, meatloaf. I thought you said made love, and I was like, what, oh, mom? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Stop screaming that into the neighbor's house. <laughs> it's not appropriate. They don't appreciate it. <laughs> Damn it, mom. <laughs> <laughs> not again. <laughs> That's something my dad would do. <laughs> That's a Mike Jensen <laughs> inappropriateness. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, our dad, my dad, is a big fan of, big of the fan? podcast so far. Um, well, actually, he's told me um, that he is not going to listen to any of the Buffy stuff <laughs> and is going to skip right to Lost. Perfect, good move. <laughs> so just right in line with uh, with our relationship. It's <laughs> great. Know, it doesn't doesn't mean anything to me or anything. No. It's not why I'm in therapy. Well, if, if it makes you feel any better, none of my family is listening. Actually, my sister said she'd listen. She yeah. didn't. She didn't say anything like she finished it or that she enjoyed it or anything Bonnie? like that. She she took a screenshot of listening to it. Right. That doesn't mean she actually finished it or enjoyed it. <laughs> she though. just scrolled somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she's make just it like, all right. I I took the shot and I put it on Instagram. All that right, counts, Bonnie. Right? Well, this is this is deep into the podcast. So if you're listening, yeah, you you better you better let us know. Yeah, she's not. <laughs> well, we're gonna find out. Uh, so, All right, so let's get back to Buffy. So they go to the bronze. Yes, back to the um, bronze. This yep, time, they... Angel shows up. Yeah. Well, so Giles says he's gonna go to the funeral home just to check. Oh right. You know, just check on the five dead. That's um, a smart move, Giles. Not. Yep. So uh, he encounters a few vampires outside the funeral home conveniently located in a cemetery which i was like huh i don't like none of the funeral homes near me are located in a cemetery yeah i was wondering Definitely that convenient, too but i was like is that a normal thing or 
Yeah. You know, when when he shows thing, up, I, I was like, what is that? The morgue? Or or is that the um like the view, like the like a mausoleum? Yeah, mausoleum. It's like, a, it's like an all like in that. one. Right. It I could mean, be I guess... a could be like a West Coast thing. Maybe. Sort of like the high schools are different out there. They have no hallways, they're all outside. Yeah. This could be the same thing with funeral homes right inside the cemetery. Well, if we think I mean Sunnydale is, you know, we're seeing the body count kind of add up. So, mm, you know, they, maybe they're like, they they're made like it more look, convenient. we're wasting, we're <laughs> wasting a lot of gas yeah. in these hearsts, getting yeah. bodies from one end of the city to the yeah, other. Yeah, we can save so much carbon emissions if we just place the funeral home within the graveyard. Yeah, they're just being green. Yeah. So um, That's a good theory. they don't even they don't even need cars. They just roll them out on the on those rolly things. Just dump them right into the next grave. Yeah, or they have a shoot, you know, a shoot, body, a a shoot body straight shoot into that, a hole. Well, it's like um like a t-shirt cannon, <laughs> a body cannon, <laughs> a cadaver cannon. Yeah, <laughs> cadaver <laughs> cannon <laughs> two point <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to put a pin in that one, Pat. Oh, boy. That's a, new, that's a new product idea. Okay. Um, go green. Cadaver mm-hmm. cannon. Cadaver cannon. <laughs> no more hearses. 100-mile range. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a, it's going to have to pack a lot of firepower. <laughs> Make sure your loved one's oh life my God. ends in a bang. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Beautiful. Joss, call me. All right. <laughs> Cadaver cannon. <laughs> Cadaver cannon. <laughs> Coming in All March. right, so he runs inside to try trying to trap out the vamps. Willow and Xander show up to help him out. Giles sends him off to find Buffy because, you know, they're like, oh, beep her. And he's like, well, there's there's no phone in here, so he can't beep her. Mm-hmm. Um, back at the bronze, as you say, uh, you know, Buffy's dancing with Owen. Um and uh, so Cordelia had had kind of showed up and he's like, I'm dancing with, you know, I'm, I'm here with Buffy. That ha- actually happens before the funeral home scene. But yep. then Angel shows up and Cordelia is like, Woo. she swoons. Oh, yeah. She's. Yeah. She's. I mean, how could you not? Tooling. I know. He just tall, dark, mysterious <laughs> man of few words. Right. Even fewer than Owen. Mm hmm. Um. And he doesn't even look at her. He just blows right past her to talk to Buffy. Yep. Uh, I love that. He, that Owen is like, oh, how do you know Buffy? And he's like, from work? <laughs> he's not wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, and and then Willow and Xander show up to also warn Buffy. And and they kind of fake being a couple uh, or being, you know, they're, uh, Willow and Xander, they're sort of like, yeah, we thought it could be fun to go on a double date. Um, they try to get Buffy to go to the funeral home, leave Owen behind, but Owen follows them. And Angel doesn't come with them, which I thought was kind of weird. Like he just showed, but he's not really into that. He just kind of shows up, gives the warning. and was like, all right, bye, peace. Like take it from mm-hmm. here. So Owen kind of shows up following them around. Buffy runs around to find Giles, who's cleverly hiding in what the hell do you call those things i was also trying to figure it out because i was trying to write in my notes i i okay you tell me what, what did you, you call it i called it a uh, cadaver drawer okay that's way better i called it a body slidey hole <laughs> what which is not descriptive at all <laughs> No, if you were to mention that to anybody, I think everybody would conjure up their own image of what that might be. <laughs> yeah, that could be not great. <laughs> so cadaver yeah. drawer. Cadaver sounds drawer way makes better. more sense. Yeah. Is that what they're really called? No. Oh. Probably not. <laughs> if I were to guess there were probably something completely different. Well should we, cer- should we you're look it certainly up? way closer to All what right. I have. All right, let, let me let me look it up real quick. Look it up. What, oh, here we go. Answers.yahoo.com. What are those cupboard things called in oh, morgues? Oh, good. Yahoo Answers. Great source of information. Okay. They Refrigerators. The <laughs> what? <laughs> morgue drawers, somebody said. They're called drawers. And you a set of morgue Yahoo drawers answers. is okay. a referred to as a refrigerator. Uh, okay, well, let's go with cadaver, cadaver, cadaver drawer? drawer. All right, let's go with cadaver drawer. Okay, Definitely cool. more descriptive than body slidey hole. <laughs> Yes, let's, let's steer clear of that one. 
so then Giles says, uh, Buffy, when I said you can slay vampires and have she's mad, he's mad at her for bringing Owen along. And she's like, I don't really bring him along. You know, he just kind of followed in, followed in like a lost and he said, puppy dog. Buffy, when I said you can slay vampires and have a social life, I didn't mean at the same time. Yeah. The, I feel like just Owen, the reason why I say that it's all for show, you would think that if he's like the studious person who likes to read all the time, mm-hmm. that he'd be a little bit smarter to like put the pieces together and figure out some things or not. I don't think he's as smart as he's trying to. Maybe, but people can be deeply in denial about a lot of bad things. Yeah. I'm not Case saying like point. he knows about the vampire stuff. I just feel like. What do you, mm, like, he's like, why are these weirdos going to a morgue? Yeah. Like there's just, obviously there's more, more to the story here and he's just like blindly following them and just, I don't know. If he had some more smarts, I think he would keep his distance a little bit. Well, I mean, I think, um, I get what you're saying, but I think he sort of sounds very sheltered. Like he kind of, you know, towards, you know, towards the end. And even before that, he's just like, seems like he doesn't get out that much. Yeah. So he could be very book smart, but not like, uh, not street smart, not street smart. Yeah. Um, and you know, and he's like into Buffy and he's kind of like, oh, this is sort of a cool adventure that we're going on. Like, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm along for the ride. Yeah. I mean, I guess not. Yeah. Whatever. They tried to leave him behind and he followed. So he's clearly intrigued Yeah. and he kind of is very morbid too. When he's at the bronze talking about Emily Dickinson. Right. So he's, yeah, he's definitely got a weird fascination. Yeah. That's bringing him along. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I could see him sort of not really working things out. I mean, and he, yeah. and he is kind of like he's not like he's not asking questions. He's just like, you know, he's like, why are you barricading the door? And <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess he is questioning whatever. through it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So Buffy brings Owen, Xander, and Willow to the observation room, then kind of mm-hmm. leaves them. And she's like, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, and that's when <laughs> Willow and Xander start like, you know, boarding up um, the door and stuff. Uh, and then Buffy and Giles go look inside more of the cadaver drawers, mm-hmm. trying to find the anointed, but they don't find anything. Well, hold on. Wait, did you already say this? Giles pops out of the cadaver drawer. Yeah, that's he was what on... I said. He oh, was okay. hi- cleverly <laughs> hiding in a body slidey hole. Yes, cadaver drawer. yes, he pops right out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On top of a body. Well, he was. I think he said something like, uh, "They, you know, they they were after me, but I I like outsmarted or outmaneuvered them or something yeah. by hiding." <laughs> yeah. Could um, you could you hide on top of a cold dead body like that in a fridge? Fuck yeah! If it meant I was gonna, it was gonna <laughs> make save my life. It but was such a quick is, answer. I thought for a second you would like think about it and be like, mm, uh, but you're like, no, nope, I'm, nope. I'm fully in, fully committed. Well, I mean, I would have a split second of being like, all right, this could be a zombie, zombie that comes back to life. But I know for sure I got two vampires chasing me down. So I'm going to hide in this here body slidey hole with my friend, dead Frank here. And you named him. Yeah. I mean. It's only right. You're a survivor. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. would get through it. But what's really funny to me is that they look through all the rest of them and there's nothing in there. Like Giles just picked the wrong one. <laughs> right. He's like, he, he had oh, so many free There's a body options. in here. I guess I'll go in. <laughs> Keep me warm, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fridge. It's cold. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, you got to do what you got to do. Is do that or die? Because yeah. Giles I guess is if like, if look, I the can't fight these guys. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. So yeah. they're back in they're back in the observation room and mm-hmm. Owen he opens yeah. some sort of shade and yeah, he just curtain. goes oh my yeah he reveals a body that's on a table starts twitching it starts twitching and then we find out and he it's... goes our body's supposed to move which I feel like <laughs> yeah. is like a very very Charlie moment yeah like that would have been Charlie's line if he was in this right yep totally Gu- hey guys guys our body's supposed to move. <laughs> Is this normal? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so then the guy wakes up and it's the religious dude. Yes. From the bus. The super crazy southern guy from the bus. He's a yeah. vampire now. He busts right through that glass. Yeah. Except <laughs> so I don't know if I was 
I watched this kind of early in the morning at uh-huh. one point. Was he saying Good start your day? He is risen in me, pork and beans. <laughs> <laughs> what was he, he saying? He says <laughs> He says I don't pork know all beans. of his crazy lines, but he does say pork and beans. Yeah, what I'll is that? Because <laughs> I say that all the time now. Oh, maybe somebody smelt pork and beans. Like they nothing is happening earlier. with pork and beans, but he smells it. He smells pork and beans. Must be, a, I don't know, maybe it harkens back to his childhood. You know, he's definitely from the South, so maybe he eats, eats a lot of pork and beans. But yeah, <laughs> just he's he's a raving lunatic, this man. <laughs> yeah, he's all about God and pork and beans. And pork and beans. Yeah. And yeah, he's just spouting off crazy nonsense. I don't know if it's Bible verses. I have no idea. Yeah. But And then he talks about, yeah, smelling pork and beans and starting to sing creepy ditties. Right, did he? So at this point, I actually turned on the subtitles within Hulu because I was like, "Is he <laughs> saying like, pork and he beans? Saying? <laughs> He's saying pork and beans, isn't yep, 100%. he?" And then I f- I found out it said his name at one point. Do you oh. know his name? No. It said his name was Borba. What? <laughs> yeah, it said Borba colon pork and beans. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of those. <laughs> You probably never had these for your kids because you have more sense than that. But there are these things called bo- booba. Have you ever seen? It's like a TV show. It's like a even more warped version of Teletubbies. Uh, nope. And there are these like weird bobbly things. And the show, they would like dance up and down and their bellies would like wobble up <laughs> and down. And then... <laughs> I found this at like Toys R Us a long, long time ago and we were shopping for my niece for Christmas and I pressed one and it was like doing this like song and going up and down, up and down. And then it went down and it went. (laughs) You know what? As strange as this interaction that we're having. Right. You, I swear we've already had this, this conversation (laughs) once. I'm sure we did. And I'm sure I showed you the fucking booba intro. (laughs) Yeah. I, I like, it's ringing some sort of weird bell. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that sounds like that guy. Yeah. (laughs) Borba or booba. (laughs) Pretty, pretty, both crazy, both Mm. nonsense. Yeah. So they all Um, run away from Borba who's screaming pork and beans, Mm -hmm. which is pretty scary scene. Yeah, when he and starts he's, yelling down the hallways of this yeah. gigantic funeral home. <laughs> yeah, well, it's 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 multi-use facility, so right. you got a it's a funeral home, cadaver it's cannon, a, a morgue. It's a, they got cadaver cannons. <laughs> right, they got, it's also a mausoleum because mm-hmm. it definitely when Giles first comes in, it looks like a mausoleum. It does. So it's it's all in one, you know. Yeah, they got to get through. They got to, you know, a lot of bodies, they got a lot of bodies in, lot of bodies. in Sunnydale. So they got to move through them quickly. They don't have time right. to be, you know, car- carting people from one place to another. No. Nope. So it's an all in one big facility. Uh, yeah. He's running down the halls talking about pork and beans, singing <laughs> creepy songs, spouting mm-hmm. nonsense. Uh, then he f- tracks down Buffy, fights with her. Uh, Throws her. Out- yeah, throws her. Owen tries to help. He knocks out Owen. With an urn. With an urn. Buffy thinks he kills him. So she's like, you killed my date. And it's just like, you know. Yeah, she says that like three times. You killed yeah. my date. Yep. So she mm-hmm. keeps kind of going after him. Then Buff, uh, Owen sort of like starts to wake up just as she's tossing, um, what's his name? Bor- Borba? Borba. Borba into the incinerator. Um, yep. but Owen is like too groggy to really understand what's going on. So he's mm-hmm. like, what happened? And they're like, oh, we chased him off. Yay. Yeah. Um, and, and then. He despises it because he's like, oh, me dum dum. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, well, again, number one, <laughs> think he's not super street smart, this Owen guy. Yeah, and yeah, number yeah. two, people are like, have a profound ability to not accept the truth that is right in front of their eyes. Especially in Sunnydale. Especially in Sunnydale when weird shit is happening and you don't want to believe it's true. Like right. you don't want to believe that vampires are real and that people are trying to kill you. You know, Nor you don't is it that. really plausible. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't really, I don't really blame them too much. 
Uh, so Buffy, you know, offers to like help him get home, but he's like kind of turned off from the idea and he ends up going like letting sort of Willow and Xander escort him instead. Mm -hmm. So the next day at school, Owen says he'd like to go out with Buffy again. Um, but he's like, yeah, you know, maybe we, maybe we can do this like crazy thing and this crazy. So she's like, oh, cool. Like he's, he's just like an adrenaline junkie. He wants to do like crazy things with which me. again, so he doesn't can feel alive. I mean, so maybe something's changed in him, but like, I feel like it doesn't line up with his character from earlier in the episode where he's like this bookworm who's like well, really into the library and Emily Dickinson. And mm -hmm. now he's like an adrenaline junkie. He's like, let's go dust people, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, so again, like in high school, we're doing a lot of like figuring ourselves out high school yeah. and college. Like that's kind of what it's for. And you know, he's sheltered, but then he goes on this one wild experience and now he's like, oh shit, like this right. is what I've been missing when I've been sitting change. at home reading yeah. Emily Dickinson. I get it. He's like, I finally feel alive, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and Buffy's like, yeah, no yeah. thanks. She... Let's just be friends. So Friend he gets zones of Owen. Yeah. Friend and zone he, and he walks away. Up in here. He walks away defeated. Yeah. But she says, well, he wants to be a danger man. Yeah. And she doesn't want to get him killed either because she does care about him. Yeah, because, you know, so she, so Giles kind of comes up and sees that she's sad. And she's like, you know, a couple days in my world and he would wind up dead or yeah. somebody else might. And she kind of looks at Giles apologetically. And he's just like, you know, I, I took a risk. Yep. Um, but there's no handbook for this. Um, right. And I think it's really cute. He reveals that. You know, he was 10 when his father told him that he would be a watcher. Uh, so his father was one and his paternal grandmother before him. Mm -hmm. um, and Giles wanted to be, quote, a fighter pilot or grocer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, one or the other. <laughs> and, you know, Buffy kind of feels guilty that she wasn't there for him. But but he assures her that, you know, they're kind of all doing their best and she's doing a really good job. Mm -hmm. Um and then, you know, Buffy is like, well, hey, at least we stopped the prophecy. Yay. Yay. And then we cut to the master. We get a nice reveal. He, he reads that passage about how five will die. You know, one will rise from the ashes that um, Buffy, you know, the slayer will not know who it is and he will lead her into hell. And we look over and it's the little boy from the bus. Right, and he's the anointed one. He's the anointed. It's always the creepy kids you got to watch out for. Yeah. Yeah. So that. So that that was a good reveal at the end. Yeah. Of the anointed one being the kid. Didn't see that coming. That was yep. pretty cool because I think the whole episode you're thinking that the anointed one is Borba. You're like, oh, he's the big, big bad pork and beans anointed. guy. Yeah. Pork and beans. Yeah. But yeah. turns out it's the kid. Yeah. So that was cool. Cool. All right, let's move. Maybe on. Maybe pork and beans was like. You know, Joss Whedon's favorite meal or something. Maybe. And he's like, I, I just got to get pork and beans into the script we somehow. Gotta I, I, gotta, I gotta get it got it. I got to get He talks to his writing <laughs> his partner. his least favorite Write meal. it in. Write in pork and beans. I love pork and beans. And the guy's like, it doesn't fit anywhere, Joss. It doesn't <laughs> make fit. Make it fit. I, I just, just make the, make make the guy. Fit. Whatever his name is. Borba? Borba. <laughs> I don't know. Borba. Just write it. Write it. Borba says pork and beans. I guess like whatever. This show's All never right, gonna Joss. this show's gonna be canceled after three episodes. Who cares? <laughs> Little did they know. <laughs> Little did they know. Um I do know one fun fact, it's not really related to this episode, and okay. I'll probably bring it up again uh in the future because you know I'll likely forget I said it. Because that's what you do. <laughs> that's what I do. Um but I do know uh, that Joss would ask his writers to think about some of the most ho like horrific things that they have experienced or like the, like what's the worst, your worst day, like think about your worst day and they would mm -hmm. turn those into demons. Mm -hmm. So, so maybe cool. this was like somebody's mom, like yelling, you got to eat your pork, eat and your pork and beans, pork and beans. chasing them with a spoon. Yeah. He's like, I just, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. probably it. Cool. Cool. Hey, Pat. 
Holiday shopping is coming up. Have you given any thought to gifts? Uh, don't remind me. I do have to do a lot of gift shopping, but perhaps you could help me with that? Maybe I could get some floripothecary items or something? Like some more whipped body butter or facial care stuff? Yeah, I gotta tell you, that whipped body butter is the bee's knees. It keeps my hands so soft during the winter, and I recommend it to everybody. I definitely will get a few of those. And I gotta get some of that acne stuff too, because I'll tell you what, my favorite has been super clean. How, how can I get some of your stuff? Well, as you know, Pat, you can always shop online at floropothecary.com and I can either ship to you or ship directly to your recipient. And I can even do a nice little handwritten gift note for you if you'd like. We did that once for your mother-in-law for Mother's Day, I think. Yeah, I think it's a nice personal touch you always add to the packages. We're always excited to get the Floor Apothecary packages. Thank you. Um, but I also have my studio open select Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays uh, in Meriden, Connecticut. So if you're local to CT, you can always book a personal shopping appointment at floorapothecary.com. If you don't know what to get for the natural beauty on your list, you can always get a gift card. Shop online or book a personal shopping appointment at floorapothecary.com. And hey, even if you don't shop with me, shop local listeners. This was a rough year for small businesses, and we could really use your support this holiday season. All right, let's move on to Lost. So this is Lost Season 1, Episode 5, which is titled White Rabbit. You want me to tell you my predictions? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about your predictions. So recap my predictions from last week. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, I was not very specific. Nowhere <laughs> near as specific as you were. Um, no. How could you? I, I guess I sort of gave up. <laughs> <laughs> you gave up. You're just like, I don't know. Stuff happens. Island, whatever. Whatever. They're going to be on an island and they're going to get sunburned. Yeah, you phoned um, it in. Yeah. So I said that we're going to get the backstory of someone. Okay. And I thought maybe Rose, just because we spent a little time with Rose. Oh, yeah. I said, you know, I'm, I'm off the dog demon thing now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I was like, I still think, you know, I'm kind of with Hurley that it's still like, I feel like it's still some kind of like dinosaur demon. And I also was like, maybe it's possessing Locke in some way. Um, hmm. Yeah. So, and I'll, yeah. Interesting. I'll elaborate. Yeah. And some of these predictions could come true like down the road. Yeah. But for so. this episode, we did get some flashbacks. Mm-hmm. So you were correct in that. But not Rose. Not Rose. We got more Jack story. Yeah. Yeah. Which more I was surprised. Jack, Jack story backstory? Ooh. Hmm. I was surprised to get more Jack's backstory considering there's still so many other characters. Yeah, me too. At first and... I was like, ugh, this guy again. Yeah, but I understand, like, if you're trying to put an emphasis on Jack as one of the main characters, you do have to keep him in the loop. Like, you can't move on to other characters and forget about Jack because he seems to be such a major part of the story Mm -hmm. and everybody's considering him a leader. So I feel like they had to sort of address that. Yeah. Those are good predictions. This... (laughs) No, uh, they're not, but thank you. (laughs) this, This episode called White Rabbit... Um, The scene uh, right at the beginning, it opens on an eye of a kid getting bullied with his friend getting beat up. And right away, we know that that's Jack as a kid. It's a flashback. Flash Jack. Flash Jack. Jumping Jack Flash. Um, It's a gas, gas, gas. (laughs) And then we're back on the beach. Uh, Charlie is running to Jack to help uh, someone who's stuck out in the surf. So Jack starts to swim out into the water after this, this person, which... Uh, seemed to be like a woman who was like sort of struggling to stay above water and saying, mm-hmm. help. She's pretty far out. She's pretty far out and he loses track of her, but he does find Boone who's there. Right. And- so at first I was like, uh, isn't Boone a lifeguard? I mean, Jack did tell him to maybe rethink his license or give his license back. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, what the hell? Where's Boone? And then, yeah. of course, Boone right. shows up, he also tried. drowning. <laughs> yeah, and he wasn't doing so good. But Boone <laughs> mentions that there was, a, there was a woman, or there was a woman, but Boone seems to be drowning. So Jack makes the conscious decision to bring Boone back to the beach, and then he tries to go back out for the uh, woman. This is very high-intensity scene. 
Very yeah. exciting. The music is way too fucking intense. Oh, it's so good. I was like, calm down, music. Uh, I'm saying millions of people keep have it drowned. going, music. This is great music. <laughs> I had to like volume way down. I was like, oh my God, this is, I too, was this is way too intense. Volume more. I was like, no. yes. You this were like, all the surround sound. Oh, I had the surround sound cranked on this one. It was I don't good. even have surround sound. How about that? <sighs> I know you're not surprised. Someday, someday. So uh, it cuts oh, to the Oh, you're going to buy me surround title. sound? No, the listeners will. Oh, they're they're going to pitch great. in. Yeah. <laughs> pitch in to buy Sammy the correct uh, <laughs> listening devices of surround sound. <laughs> so we get the lost title. Uh, we find out in the following scene that the woman who died was named Joanna, and she mm-hmm. wasn't supposed to be on the plane. She got caught in the riptide. And, of course, Jack being a doctor who takes his job very seriously, he beats himself up for not saving both Boone and Joanna because Joanna died. So, But he saves Boone. He saves Just Boone. Just to clarify. Yeah, Boone's fine. He doesn't, he doesn't lose Boone, too. Nope. Nope. Um, he sees a man in the water on the beach, like far off on, in a suit. Or Which something. he has seen before. He has had this vision before. Mm-hmm. I think it was like episode two or something, wasn't it? it I was think pretty so. early on. It, yeah. And then I feel like it happened again. Yeah. Maybe so the last episode. He asked Kate if she saw it. Mm-hmm. And she was like, when is the last time you slept? Yeah. It seems like nobody's really sleeping. And then he goes, I'll sleep when I'm dead. And storms off. That. No, he doesn't. I just made that up. <laughs> uh, we get a quick scene with Michael and Walt brushing their teeth. Uh, nothing really much happens there. They talk mm-hmm. about the Korean couple. Uh, Korean couple, we get a scene with them. The son is the name of the lady. Mm-hmm. We find out. And then... Um, we get some dialogue between them, which is in subtitles, so we can understand what they're saying in Korean. And she wants to communicate with the others, and mm-hmm. he disagrees. She said, "She says like we should try communicating with them more." And he yeah. just basically shuts her down, like no. Then we get a, a fun scene between Sawyer and Shannon. Shannon shows up, and mm-hmm. she wants some aloe, mm-hmm. and he calls her sticks. And then he has to spell it out what he means. He's talking about her legs, her skinny legs. And then he wants to bargain with her. He's like, well, what will you give me for this aloe? And then she thinks that he's leading up to some favor being in return. And he basically just says five grand. And she's like, what are we? What are you going to do from with money here? And he's like, I don't know, but I'll take IOU. Yeah, he's <laughs> a creep. I would have yeah. fucking stabbed him already. No, oh, I know. I would have let know. the polar bear eat him. <laughs> Whoops, guess he's gone. Now we can kill the polar bear. It feeds Thanks, him polar to bear. Polar bear, yeah. Mm-hmm. So after that, uh, Kate and Claire sort clothes and chat. They talk about astrology and... Claire asks uh, Kate if she's a Gemini. She's like, You're, are you a Gemini? You're restless, passionate. Um, she's like, I could do you a chat if you wanted. I love Claire. <laughs> so, of course, I love this because I'm into astrology. Of course. And I am a Gemini. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, my God. And then I wrote down, I would be Claire's BFF. And then when she was like, I could do your chart for you, I was like, okay, I would probably be Claire. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I'd be the idiot on the beach, like, I'll do your chart for you. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone would be like, we need water. And be like, right, right. I could do your chart for you. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, they're not going to put Claire to work too much. You know, That's she's true. she's so sweet because, of course, she, like, wants to help out. So it's super cute that she's, like, going to help sort long. Like, that's kind of stuff that she can do. But they're not going to make her go on any crazy treks to, like, get water and stuff. Right. So, right. Yeah, so I like I liked that scene. Yeah, that made Kate, me happy. Kate didn't really uh, respond to that though. It no. seems like she was not into the Gemini into astrology it. talk. No, yeah. but she wasn't like a jerk about it to Claire. No, she just kind of like didn't respond. She's yeah. like, mm, this seems <laughs> out there. You can, which do I chart, I get. Uh, some people just aren't into chats and all that. Yeah. Um, then we get a scene between Hurley, Jack, and Charlie. They're counting up the water bottles. There's not much left. Um, the boar meat is also running low, so they're really running out of uh, resources here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I love Hurley's uh, suggestions. He says, maybe we can make one of those water-finding sticks. 
Maybe the dog can find water. I, I mean, if they can find pot and bombs, I'm sure they can find water. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty funny. Yeah. So, of course, everybody's looking to Jack to make a decision. And Jack is already pretty high strung because of his failure in the water to go save Joanna, and letting right. her die. So he's really in his not. Visions. In his visions. He's not in a good place. And he sort of snaps at them because they're like, dude, you need to make a decision. He's like, I'm not deciding anything. And yeah, he's he, like tired of being the leader now. He's like, I didn't choose this. But he, yeah. I mean, he kind of, he, he didn't outright choose it, but like he sort of de facto became because when he woke up, he, you know, everything was chaos. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of like reining everyone together and helping people out and pulling people away from the wreckage and bringing people back to life and tourniqueting and all this stuff. So yeah, I think sort of some people are just a leader. Yeah, I think some people are just naturally more a leader. Like when yeah. things are in chaos and out of control, a lot of people will freeze and not really understand what to do. And some people will just start doing stuff and start, you know, calling the shots. And people yeah, respond to that. You need that. Yeah. And I think I think that's what happened on the beach was he just started he just sprung into action, started doing things, and then you know people looked to that sort of authority as we need this you know leadership and authority. And ever since then, he's been sort of the leader of the group. Yeah, and one thing Dave said while we were watching the first episode again today, uh, well, you know, uh, me again, him for the first time, he was like, "Why are all these people running? Like, I, like people are just running back and forth, like they're constant. How are they not getting to where they need to be?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I was like, well, you know, I mean, they're they're probably looking for other people or looking for things, or they're just like panicking." I was like, you know, I consider myself like fairly, you know cool under pressure i guess it depends on the situation but like <laughs> yeah. you know i can kind of get it together um i was like but if if we if we were on that plane and we went down on that plane crash and i couldn't find you i would i would be standing there screaming or running around screaming looking for you like right and and, and until i found you i would not rest right you know so so you understand the chaos. I understand the chaos. I don't think I. I don't think I would have been a jack in this situation. <laughs> you wouldn't have been pulling people together and telling them what to do, though. No, I don't think I would have been a Shannon just standing and screaming. I think I would have been screaming, but I would have been at least running and trying to find. You, you would know. have been a mobile screamer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Roving about on the beach. Yes. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Um, so then we get a flashback to Jack as a kid again. This time he's with his dad. We find mm -hmm. out his dad is a big time a doctor. Big dick. Okay. Oh. I was going to say doctor. And jackass. <laughs> jackass. Also, also that. Jack dad. Ass. <laughs> and then uh, he gives him this sort of uh, esoteric speech about, I have what it takes. You don't want to be a hero. You don't want to try to save everyone. When you fail, you don't have what it takes. So I'm sure that's just one of the many conversations he's had with his dad that sort of formed who Jack is now, which mm -hmm. is he's sort of an emotional mess <laughs> yeah. in a way. I mean, he's always out of breath. We know that for sure. I am still not really noticing that. Oh, like okay. even with you saying it, I I like t <laughs> I was paying special attention today cuz he was running around quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like I don't know, it doesn't seem out of place yet. <laughs> um, I'll let you know when it does. Okay. So basically that's that whole scene and it seems like his dad is also a drinker. I think he's drinking in that in that scene yeah, as well. Yeah, he was. And it was a cool transition with the like kind of sound of him shaking the um like the ice and the glass. His glass, yeah, the ice and yeah. the glass so it was sort of like tinkling and then yeah. it transitioned and, into that scene. That was pretty right. interesting. Right. And that comes back later on in the episode yes. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this is a really creepy. well written episode. I I love the the back and forth between the flashbacks and the, mm. ah, not not you, not into no, it. No, I I do like I do like the the um, transitions and sort of like the um, the sound bridging. Yeah, that's probably not a technical term. I'm just no, trying is. to. Oh, good, yeah. sweet. Sound I'm bridge. trying. I'm trying to uh, to you know match your technical 
stuff knowledge. <laughs> I'm doing a great job, I know. Yeah, you are. Uh, but yeah, no, the the like way that they bridge, you know, the different scenes with the sound, mm-hmm. I think is is really that was really interesting to me. And of course it's shot really well. It's fucking every lost episode is gonna be shot really well. Yeah. Except it does there were some things things that made me dizzy again. Um not like actually dizzy, but just like, mm. whoa, stop. Um, yeah. but I'll, 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 when we get to the end, I'll tell you okay. my, my problem. Okay, cool. So after that, that scene with his dad, we go back to the beach. Boone questions Jack about leaving him. He's basically tells her like, you should have saved her. I was fine, which clearly he wasn't. He was going to die. Yeah. I'm he definitely going to die. We didn't even see him in the water. Right. But Boone digs in even more. He says, who appointed you our savior? Which. Yeah. That's like Jack the last thing already... Jack's got to hear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, of course, at this point, he sees the man again. Mm-hmm. So this yeah, time. Yeah, so. Yeah. At this point, when he sees the man again, mm-hmm. I, um, this is when I was like, oh, I bet it's his dad that yeah. he's seeing. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then I had a thought that like, oh, maybe the island is manifesting like their worst fears mm. or unresolved traumas or unfinished business, like mm. ghosts kind of situation. Like yeah. that was, that was sort of like what was sort of coming to me in that moment. As I was like, Oh, maybe this, this is what's happening on this Interesting. island. Yeah. I also had the same thought. I know I've already seen this series before. Mm-hmm. Um, but I said, I said, he follows him to, into the jungle. Spooky. Is it his dad? Question mark. Mm-hmm. Um, but he walks away and into the jungle. So did you not remember? Or did you know and you say. were trying to remember about? I can't say. But I'm just saying what my observation was, like, because of the flashbacks. But we, it's probably but we probably find a out in this episode. Oh, we do, don't we? Yeah. Okay. It's his dad. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, what I'm asking is, did you remember that when watching this episode, or yes. did you like rethink that again? Yeah, but sure? they they like cut closer up at one point. Yeah, so and they I was show. Like, yeah, they show. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. that's definitely him. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah that that happens like maybe the next time or something they show him. Yeah. So I at least guessed it's you know, one time ahead. Right. Yeah, it's pretty good. Counts. So and then we get another flashback with Jack and his mom. This time he's he's grown up, and yeah. she's basically screaming at him, telling Jack to bring him back. Hmm. Uh, and then Jack's saying like he doesn't want that, and she's saying he won't take care of himself. You have to go after him, and he's like I can't. Um, and then she tells him like you don't get to say I can't, not after what you did. Bring your father home, Jack. Yeah. So I don't know what he did, but I'm still like. Whatever happened, this man is an adult. Mm -hmm. So if he ran off, it's not his child's like responsibility to go after him. Right. What the fuck is the mom doing? Right. Why can't she get off her ass and go after him? Right. And I feel like this happens to a lot of kids too. Yeah. That I that was something I wrote down. Yeah. Yeah, That was something I wrote down. I was like, (laughs) my note is Fucking parents putting their shit on their kids. <laughs> <laughs> After that flashback, we do find out in that flashback that um, his dad disappeared in Australia. Yeah. So then my note was, oh, that's why Jack went to Australia. Right. So now we're starting to get a little, little bit of the puzzle pieces put together here mm-hmm. about why he was there. Yeah. Uh, Claire, uh, Claire passed out on the beach. That's mm-hmm. not good. Nope. Charlie can't find water. Somebody stole the water. Yep. And I, of course, was like, I'm betting it's Sawyer, that fucking bastard. But then it's like, that's exactly what they want you to think. Yep. And they they address that in a couple scenes later here. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, actually, no, it's the scene right there. So Saeed, John, and Kate wa- uh, talk about finding water in the jungle. Mm-hmm. And uh, John volunteers, I know where to look. Oh, John, John Locke. is Locke. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, guy with a scar. Yeah, he, because... I keep call, I call him Locke. Um, Locke. So yeah, but yeah. but I know who you're talking about now. Yep. Yeah, John Locke. John Locke. Um, okay, I guess it wasn't that scene right after. Uh, Jack tromps through the jungle looking for his dad. Uh, mm-hmm. He screams, "Where are you?" 
he's looking for him. Just can't find yeah, him. Yeah, that's the scene that's like the camera's like whipping around him oh, and yeah. all and it's like keeps going. It's the same thing that happened when we were uh, not panning, but tilting. Yes. Up Great job. the the hill, mountain, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um, it was just like one of those things where like it goes on like just too long. Yeah. And it's like very disorienting. Okay, you could have made it a little bit shorter and not made me want to fucking puke. Well, I think that's kind of the point though, is they want you to feel disoriented as if you are within Jack's, you know, subjective feelings. Yeah, you know, I get like that. you want to no, feel like that. Jack. Jack's like completely he's dehydrated, mm -hmm. he's uh very tired. And he's seeing these visions, like his head's spinning hardcore. They want and you so as a viewer to almost feel the same way. Yeah. Yeah. We get another flashback of uh, Jack is inside a hotel room in Sydney where his dad uh, was, I guess. And his dad is missing. Um, we find out that his father was the chief of surgery because Jack basically just says it. Like, he's the, fa he's, the, he's the chief of surgery. Yeah, that's <laughs> such a weird thing. Like, yeah. I mean, I get it. You know, he's still your dad, whatever. You're trying to be protective of him. But like if if I've been forced onto this mission of trying to track down my dad, yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, what the fuck is he doing out here? Like, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be defending him. Yeah. Uh, so that was like kind of a weird like I'd I'd be I'd be thanking, you know, the because it, it's not a cop that helped. It's like the. I Mayor like D or someone, yeah, I feel like someone at like the hotel just staff. A guy who works at the hotel, yeah. Yeah, like I, I would be tr asking him more questions and being like, "What do you mean the condition he was in?" You know. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're back in the jungle. Jack sees his dad again. Continues to chase. This again has some crazy musical stings. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of lots of uh, suspenseful mystery here, and then Jack almost falls off a cliff mm -hmm. and this is what i this is almost this is probably my favorite moment of the uh, episode just because they cut to commercial it's a literal cliffhanger <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even think about that <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah it cut to commercial i was like <laughs> here you go <laughs> it cut to commercial i stood up i was like what oh what Oh, I just started pacing the room. It's a cliffhanger. <laughs> Sorry, you were pacing the what? The room. The room? The room. The room? The room. All right. Okay, listen here, eggs. Eggs. I'm going to go fry some eggs now. <laughs> as long as you do it in the right room. Room. What'd you do with all the room? <laughs> where where's all the rum gone? <laughs> where's all the rum gone? <laughs> Why did you burn the rum? Oh, um, Jack Sparrow. So John Locke after the commercial break, of course, John Locke arrives at the cliff, saves Jack. Mm -hmm. Uh and uh they fall they fall over onto the ground and uh John's like, "Are you okay?" and Jack just laughs like a it? maniac. Yeah. <laughs> But this is like a part where like I sort of felt for him. I was like, oh, I've been there. Like we're just yeah. like everything's gone wrong. Like you're He's just like, yeah, of course, chasing my fucking dead father almost right. gets me killed. <laughs> right. Chasing your dead father through the jungle. You're dehydrated. You can't sleep. You just mm -hmm. let some woman die. You got called out for not being you a leader, for being a leader. <laughs> rock bottom. Oh. I mean, not. he didn't really hit, you know. He almost bottom, did. But. But yeah. almost. He's not having a good day. He's and I've totally been there day. where you're just like, nah, what can you do? You're just going to laugh. Ah. No, <laughs> you totally what else lose are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Charlie gets water to Claire. Uh, they talk about John Locke as the geezer with 400 knives. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, they talk about when are they going to rescue us? Charlie says soon. And then. Wait, but we don't. Uh... You didn't talk about who actually was was stashing the water. That's the next scene. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so Claire starts talking about her pregnancy, and she says, I'm like this time bomb of responsibility waiting to go off. And Yeah, there's this... a cute cute moment with them. Yeah, nice tender moment where, they, where Charlie just kind of smiles at her and says, you don't scare me. Yeah. You don't Aww. scare me. <laughs> um, and then he's like, let me just sit, let me sing a song to you. <laughs> 
<laughs> you all, everybody. You all, everybody. <laughs> it's drive you shaft. You don't, everybody. you don't know. It's drive shaft. <laughs> still doing things. <laughs> still doing things. We're still touring. Next scene after that is Saeed and Kate uh, question the Korean couple about the water bottles. They find that one of them had a water bottle, mm-hmm. and they point to Sawyer. Saeed cautions Kate to watch him and find out where Sawyer is hiding his stash. Yeah, because she's she's ready to like like attack him and he's yeah. like no 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 like hold back because she would do what you would do if you were yes. on the island you oh, would 100 you would march he up would to already him be dead by now please yeah. oh, even yeah. if you i couldn't do it in him. a rage i do it in the middle of the fucking night <laughs> so scary master would never know <laughs> <laughs> so scary um i'd be like let me draw your chart for you so <laughs> And then Claire would be like, did you say chat? (laughs) Claire, just call from the other side of the beach. Did you say chat? Don't worry about it, Claire. (laughs) Now you said chat. I got my own chat. We can chat together. (laughs) Uh, So Kate attacks Sawyer. Then I burn his body and I would Okay, we don't need any more details. (laughs) So Kate attacks Sawyer. And uh, he flips her over, sort of gets gets a hold of her. Oh, yeah. And he's like, that's more like it. Fucking yeah. Oh. oh, I know. He's going to be around for the long haul. I fucking know <laughs> it. Just to, just to annoy the shit out of me. Who's to say? Uh, and then Saeed uh, is there as well. He pulls him off her. And, of course, Sawyer has another nickname for one of the characters. He calls the Korean man Mr. Miyagi. Don't like that. <laughs> it's not nice. No. Um, of course, though, he doesn't have the water, we find out. And he throws her the sheriff's badge, and he calls her the new sheriff in town. He said, but, might as well make it official. But he does have some stashes of other things. He does. He's got a bunch of goods because, as we remember got a few scenes booze. back, he's yeah, been he was... rifling through the wreckage, just yeah. finding his own goods. Yeah, yeah I mean... I might be tempted to do that a little bit. I mean, if you're trying to survive, like, especially yeah, Not him, everyone's going to survive. He's a loner, too. He's not the type that wants to, like, team up with people and be a community member. He yeah. just wants to grab his own and take care of himself. Yeah. He throws her the badge. And I kind of like that moment because how would you control a group of strangers where there is no authority? Like, mm-hmm. you have to have some sort of leadership and some sort of sheriff or something to be you know making up rules and then enforcing those real rules i mean it's really sort of an interesting uh conundrum and like who takes on those responsibilities pat i've given this a lot of thought oh boy because i've watched you know my fair share of horror shows and movies and Mm -hmm. i watched walking dead a good chunk of it not all of it yeah and so you know you start to think like what what would I do in these situations? Yeah. And I mean, I think you have to, whether or not I would end up being some sort of leader, you got to use people's skills. Okay. You know, so like you make people feel useful by finding out what their skills are and, you know, kind of giving them their strengths. Yeah, exactly. Um, And you know, just showcasing that. So what would your strength be in a zombie apocalypse slash on an island? Well, I can identify plants to eat, which is a pretty good skill to have. Oh, right. Tea class. Yes. My (laughs) my (laughs) eight month long tea class that I took. (laughs) My herbalist training. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so that's helpful. Definitely. Like I can make, you know, I can make a lot of natural, um, natural remedies, whether it's like, you know, food or, you know, balms and salves and using plants medicinally. So that's a pretty damn good handy skill, I would Mm say. Um, And they'd be like, we're thirsty. And be like, well, you can smoosh this on your face (laughs) like this. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I wouldn't be great at finding water. <laughs> We're hungry. We're out of bore. What can we do? Well, this bomb is good if you're a little bit chafed on your side here. <laughs> you know, 
a pet. If we're stuck on an island together, you, I would be you murdered can fucking immediately. Get sunburn. <laughs> That's you true. can get sunburn. I'm not going to put any solves on your wounds. You can get infected. <laughs> Rub some fucking salt water. Actually, that'd be good. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> John Locke tells Jack uh, he needs to come back and lead the group. Mm-hmm. And Jack's worried about failing at that. And he says, I think I'm, I think I'm going crazy. And John Locke says, you're not going crazy. Crazy people think they're getting saner. Yeah, which crazy I, people don't know they're crazy. Right, they think they don't they're know. getting saner. Yeah, which <laughs> yeah. is such a great quote. I was like, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I have a lot of lock quotes from this yeah. one. I'm like, oh, he's dropping a lot of wisdom today. Yeah, he's grown on you. You really mm-hmm. you really did not like him at the beginning. I didn't, but yeah. I still have some thoughts. Okay. He said, I'm, I'm chasing something, someone. And then Locke says, ah, the white rabbit, which is the title of the sh- the, the episode of the show. Yeah, and, and a reference to, you know, Alice in Wonderland. Alice mm. in the Looking Glass. Yep. And then Locke questions him, and he's like, well, you're a doctor. How would you, you know, explain this? Which you I know, thought was very smart. Yeah. And he says, well, I'd call it a hallucination, you know, dehydration, lack of sleep, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and then John, again, he's so mysterious. He's kind of out there. Mm-hmm. He's, he's pretty woo-woo. And he says... This place is different. It's magic. It's special. We all feel it. What if everything happened here happened for a reason? Mm-hmm. I was like, ah. I can get behind that. Yeah, right? Pretty good stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel like John Locke should hook up with Claire and, make and get his charts chat together. Red. Yeah, he needs <laughs> his chat read for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he also said, I looked into the eye of this island. What I saw was beautiful. So this is what makes me think he's possessed. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's looking into the eye of the island. And that is beautiful. And I was like, that's unsettling. Mm, especially if there's like a, a dinosaur out there. Yeah, yeah. dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I'm like, okay, you know, Locke, he's he's proving his worth. He's finding water. You know, he's, he's tackling fucking shit, taking care of boars. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he's very useful. He's contributing a lot. But I would keep an eye on him. Yeah. Keep That's your distance. That's how I, yeah, keep, yeah. you know. Just, you know, just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Dude's got a lot of knives, too. He has, what, two, 500 knives? They well, saying. they're saying 400 knives, but I think it's more like knives. he's got like six I knives. I only have <laughs> enough room for 200 knives. <laughs> <laughs> right. Was that, I think that was a Charlie line. Yeah. Yeah, when he was talking with Claire. So Jack actually stays in the jungle. That night, he he ends up not going back to the beach because he's got to sort of figure he's it out. He's got to have a spiritual reflect. journey. He does. Jungle. He's got yeah. to go on his own walkabout. That's what. Yeah, he's having a spiritual experience. Yep. So mm-hmm. we get another flashback. He's in a morgue or a medical examiner's office, and I was like, oh, crossover moment between the two episodes, Buffy, yes. Vampire Slayer, <laughs> and Lost, because we get to see cadaver drawers in yes. both episodes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> And you know what a weird thing that <laughs> that that they have in common. Yeah, it's such a such a strange crossover. But there 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 is one. That's and I they feel open like that's one up, first... and there's Giles. And there's Giles. He's oh like, oh my god. Hello, sorry, I didn't know how I got here. I got I <laughs> I I went in one uh, in Sunnydale, California, and in I 1997. came out here. <laughs> Australia, what year is it? What is it? He's got a big long beard and his vest is all tattered. <laughs> He's like, all I had to munch on was this cadaver. Oh, God. Oh, Giles. <laughs> Giles, I had to survive. <laughs> he gets upset. Um, so the coroner explains to Jack that he was found in an alleyway with a, a blood alcohol content that gave him a heart attack, which is how he died. Woof. Um, he shows the body to Jack. Jack is overcome with emotion. He's like, yeah, that's him. And then he cries his eyes out. Oh, one, one lock quote that you left out before this scene was, mm-hmm. um, he says, a leader can't lead until he knows where he's going. True. Yeah. I, liked, I really liked that line. Yep. That is good. Mm-hmm. So Jack has a fire going. He's out in the jungle. And then we hear that clink of ice in the glass mm-hmm. and somebody walks behind him. So Jack fashions a torch real quick, the piece of piece of wood, classic movie torch. Love those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Looks just like the Goonies. 
<laughs> right? Or uh, Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. The chase leads him to a spring waterfall, and he finds a creepy doll in the water. Yep. Yeah, I would, that would have been like, nope, this is it for me. Yeah, I was like, huh? <laughs> but again, he's on a spiritual journey, so he's got to yeah. follow through. He's got to figure out what's what's the deal here, you know? Mm-hmm. So he continues on. He finds uh, More dolls. wreckage. More dolls and wreckage of the plane, it seems. And he finds a coffin, his father's coffin. And then we flash back to his gate at the airport in Sydney. And the lady won't let him board with the body without proper documentation. Which Um, seems fair. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sort of with the lady on this. I'm like, hey, you 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 got to file for the cadaver. You can't just carry on. Your yeah. dad, your dead dad. Just I'm check sorry. Your dad. Yeah, you can't just check your dead dad, <laughs> Jack. You got to fill something Come out. Come on, Jack. Yeah. But he breaks down and pleads with her because he just wants it to be over. He says, I need to bury my father. I want yeah. this to be over. Yeah. I don't and, know. I get that, but I'm also like, She's where's the papers, job, Jack? Man. Like, yeah. just fucking fill out the papers. Yeah, come on, How just long go is that going to take out, you? Yeah. Um, but they I guess he's probably would under give the gun. it to the, give him the papers at the morgue. Right. Well, However, it must have worked out because he got on the plane with the body. Um, Well, or did it? Did he get on the plane with an empty coffin and it was always empty? Perhaps. Now we're back in the jungle at night. He opens the coffin. Of course, it's empty. And he slams it shut, destroys it out of complete rage. I was thinking, you know what? Not smart, Jack. I would have used that as a bed. I would have dragged it back yeah. to the beach and gave it to Claire. Like, here you go. This might be good for you or your you baby sleep in or both. Coffin. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. What else? What's the alternative? Sand. You know. Yeah. You could fashion a little hammock, I guess. But I'd be all up in that coffin. I'd be like, night night, clunk. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved it. I really, really wish that you were watching uh, what we do in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get around to it. Guillermo. <laughs> I am not asleep yet. Anyways. <laughs> um, People will know. They'll know. We're back on the beach. Boone brings Claire some water and uh, Charlie attacks. <laughs> All mm-hmm. chaos erupts and Jack arrives back just in time to sort of break it up. And he gives a little speech, you know, as leaders do. If we can't uh, live together. We're going to die alone. Yeah. He says we have to stop waiting. Mm-hmm. We need to start figuring things out. We can't do this. Every man for himself doesn't work. We need to start organizing, which I was like, you know what? That kind of works for our country right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can't do this. We got yeah. we, we to start figuring things out. He says, if we can't live together, we're all going to die alone. And then Sawyer talks to Boone. He basically asks him, like, how does it feel to be the most hated? <laughs> yeah. How does it feel to be me for a day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's just because Boone... Boone was the one who took the water. He took the water, yeah. Yeah. The last part of the episode, uh, Kate brings Jack some water, and they have a little little dialogue. They ask about where he was, and Jack doesn't say much. I feel like this is their whole... This is their whole dynamic is like Mm -hmm. they go off, they do their own separate things. They come back together and they try to talk about it and they talk about it just without talking about it. That's their whole relationship is like, let's just be coy with each other and then not tell each other what we're really doing or thinking or feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like the whole, there's a lot of um, just very sappy people bringing each other water, the Mm -hmm. Korean couple, you know, the the uh, husband bring his wife's son some water and she says, thank you. And he says, that's what husbands do. Mm -hmm. Very sweet, but also, you know. So it seems like they got the water thing figured out since Jack found that like spring waterfall, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that was the episode of Lost. So what's your favorite moment of the episode? I mean, I do think Locke has a lot of really great wisdom, maybe mm-hmm. because he's possessed and it's the island talking through him a little bit. Okay. Um, I also did love the the like little astrology, you know, thing. Claire's mm-hmm. just super cute. Yeah. Um, but I think my favorite scene was probably the scene with with Charlie and Claire. Charlie and Claire. You know, yeah. how he's Sweet just... scene. Yeah, especially because... Um, you know, we kind of see not everybody, but, you know, a couple of characters, like especially with Hurley, like kind of helping her out and checking in on her and, you know, kind of um, 
babying her, you know, uh, and so I sort of like that she shared this vulnerability of, you know, being like, I feel like everybody's kind of looking at me like this taking time bomb. And yeah, um, so I think it. I just think that was like really sweet that we kind of get a little bit more about about her. Yeah, that was a good that was a good moment. My favorite yeah. moment for Lost is when Jack grabs the torch and he's going through the jungle just because I was on the edge of my seat. And he finds the doll and stuff. It doesn't oh, yeah. really end with like the satisfying like ending of that scene. Yeah. But I I like the uh, the suspense of him going through the jungle, and I thought it was mm-hmm. shot really well. And the music is wow, chef's kiss. Yeah, I mean, and I did like I I did like him beating up the coffin, and <laughs> I mean that had to have been a pretty therapeutic yeah. experience, <laughs> cathartic sure, experience. Cathartic. Yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite moment of Buffy? Oh, so many, so many good moments. I know. Um, I think, though, out of all of them, I think I have to go with the part where uh, Xander dresses her in the overcoat and the ski cap <laughs> just because of his delivery was very funny. And <laughs> I just uh, thought that was funny. My favorite part is Giles saying, tonight we go into battle and then... Cut to him and Buffy sitting very bored in the graveyard. (laughs) Yeah, that was a great smash cut. What show wins? Oh, man. I mean. (laughs) I'm torn on this one because I don't know if maybe I just like wasn't in the mood for Jack's shenanigans. And I think just like there wasn't enough to set it up for me. There wasn't enough time that he resolved it. Mm Mm-hmm. So I really, Buffy wins. I'm really, I'm really torn. I think Buffy was just a lot of fun. I yeah. don't love Owen. I don't love the storyline, but it's just, a, there's just a lot of fun that kind of happens in it. Yeah. I'm going to say Buffy for me. Yeah. This is almost a straight up tie for me between yeah. the two episodes because. Okay. If we can do that, then I would say it's a tie for me too. Okay. Yeah. I think it's a tie because Buffy, I really liked, um, I thought the comedy was on point in this and there was like a lot of good moments, but I think the episode itself, I think it's, it's sort of like a setup episode where, Mm -hmm. you know, it's setting up the idea of the anointed one, the the kid. Um, And we do get the Borba guy as like kind of a cool bad guy, but he's pretty short lived. Like there's not much that happens. Like basically he just chases them and he gets thrown into the oven. And then there's the whole thing with Owen. But I was even though I've already seen this episode of Lost, I was like really into it. Like I was hanging on all of the scenes. I'm like, oh, this is this is great. This is great. Like I was really into it and I liked the thread of back and forth, mm-hmm. but not as many great moments as Buffy had. So I think yeah. it is sort of like an even playing field on this one. Okay, cool. I'm glad you, I'm glad you felt the same way. Cool. Cause yeah, that's that's pretty much how I felt. But I I felt pressure to choose one. But yeah. All right, predictions. Well, you go first. What okay. what are your predictions from uh, Buff, for boy, Buffy? Boy, I was hoping to buy myself a little bit of time so I could think of some. <laughs> um, you don't like write them down as you're. You have all these notes. You didn't make any predictions at the end. Mm, <laughs> oh boy. Um, I predict that the anointed kid. mm Hmm will come back but not for not in the next episode next episode is going to be another monster of the week episode because this was a this was a minor big bad this is a little bad episode Mm -hmm. (laughs) so (laughs) little big bad i think they're going to take a break they're going to do a monster of the week the anointed kid won't be back for another two to three episodes unfortunately borba's gone forever because he got incinerated so he'll never be back no well, you never know. And Owen will come back. Mm-hmm. You know what? No, he's gone forever. We're never going to see Owen again. He's done for. He's just a boy lost in the ether because we got to get around to more boys. You don't think he's going to come back to be with Cordelia? No, I do not. Is he? I don't, I'm just asking. And uh, we didn't get much Willow in this episode. We didn't get any great Willow uh, lines. No, not really. Sort of wasted. 
I wouldn't say it was wasted. I think we had some fun Giles Buffy moments. Yeah. Last prediction. Mm -hmm. I think that in one episode down the road, and I think this won't happen for another two or three seasons. So this Mm -hmm. is a long-term prediction. There's going to be an episode dedicated to a new teacher coming to Sunnydale High. And she's English like Giles. And she's gorgeous like Giles. He's going to to fall in love with her and then it's going to be revealed that she is somehow a bad uh, vampire egg egg head (laughs) she's a yeah she's a bad egg what are your predictions for lost i think we're going to see more defined roles form in the next couple of episodes like sheriff leader president i mean i don't think they're gonna be like who's club president and who's (laughs) treasurer (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> who's head of astrology? And Claire would be like, me, I got the chats. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but I do want to hear Claire talking about the sign that her child might be born under. Mm. If like this is going to be a thing. If she's really into astrology, that should be something that she's thinking about. She would be talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Even if nobody else is interested. Right. Um, so yeah, I just think we're going to see, you know, cause that was kind of Jack's thing is he's like, listen, we all got to do our part. You know, if you weren't doing anything, figure out what you're doing now kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to see what the fuck Shannon's going to be doing <laughs> instead of painting her goddamn toenails Yeah, all the time. I mean, I guess she was helpful in translating the French, you know? Yeah. But she's mostly so. dead, dead weight at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it would be nice to see her, you know, do anything. <laughs> I don't know. Locke, his whole thing about looking into the eye of the island, that is... That's freaking you out, isn't it? That's freaking me out a little bit. Hmm. It's just a its just a very weird thing to say. Yeah. Um, and I can handle a lot of weird, mystical, woo-woo stuff, but telling me you looked into the eye of an island, I'm keeping, you know, I'm just keeping a, an eye on you. Right. Well, he's got the scar on his eye. Yeah. So maybe that gave his eye special powers to see into the island's eye. Maybe. I mean, if I were Jack, I'd be like, what did you see in the eye of the... <laughs> like, he grabs I just a clipboard. Like... <laughs> Can no, you describe I... <laughs> the eye? What color would you Draw say it. the eye is? Yeah. I, and I just think that's a thing that also happens... I mean, I think it's because they have so many characters to get through. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, like if I'm, if someone tells me they looked into the eye of the island and it was beautiful, I'd be like, okay, you want to describe that for me? Like what did, what was it that you saw? What was beautiful? Let's, let's talk about this a little bit because, you know, I'm a little. And you know what he would do if I'm putting on my John Locke hat? Yeah, put it on. he'd, uh, He'd stand up, he'd give you a little smile, he'd say. Well, I think these are things that everybody has to see for themselves. And then he'd walk away. And then I'd be like, okay, definitely gonna keep an eye on him. <laughs> and then he just, he peeks his head back and he says, "The your eye or the island's eye? <laughs> yeah, he just comes out of the bushes. <laughs> yeah, hi, me again. <laughs> Want to see some knives? <laughs> Want to play backgammon? Want to know a secret? No. <laughs> <laughs> no more secrets, Locke. Your oh, secrets David. freak me out. Um. <laughs> so yeah, I I just feel like we got to keep an eye on him, and some an something's eye. not something's not right. Yeah, an eye. Yeah. Um. That it just sounds like a possessed person to me. Interesting. And the thing is. He is the one who says a crazy person do, you know, doesn't think they're crazy. So he's crazy? So maybe he's crazy. And he thinks he's getting saner. And he thinks he's getting saner. Mm. You know, just, maybe just, you're on to something. just think about that. Thinking just, about yeah, it. Think about it. Uh, I think especially with Claire talking about how she's a ticking time bomb, I think she's going to have her baby pretty soon. Um, she's going to explode. I don't think she's going to explode. <laughs> uh, hopefully Jack knows how to deliver a baby. Yeah, let's, um, hope. let's hope he doesn't fluff that up, huh? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I feel like that's pretty easy, right? The body does most of the work. Doctors just kind of got to catch it, clean it up, 
So we're back up a little bit. Most of the time. <laughs> it's easy, right? Yeah. Tell me it's easy, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so easy. So easy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm just thinking like in the next next couple episodes, I think Claire's going to have her baby. Mm. Um, and... Um, yeah, I don't know. I still I still want to get to Rose's backstory, but we didn't see her at all this episode. Yeah. So I'm kind of thinking that's not going to happen. Maybe we're going to get to the backstory of one of the um of like the Korean couple. Mhm. Yep. Maybe that's that's who we're going to get to next. Yep. Or Claire. Perhaps. No, it's hard to predict. So many characters. There's so, so many, many backstories. Characters. And and that's the thing is like it's very I mean, like episodic isn't really the right word because, <laughs> of course, it's episodic. This show's like episodic. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like we always know we're going to get a backstory, especially because you said that in the beginning, that backstory is like kind of the main way that Lost tells, you know, sort of moves the, the plot along. Yeah. We know in every episode, we, or we can pretty much guess in every episode we're going to get a backstory. So, like, that's not too much of a prediction to me yeah um it's just kind of when's it gonna happen figuring out whose yeah. backstory it's gonna be right so i'm gonna go with the korean couple okay cool yeah nice anything else we want to say about these episodes before we sign off i don't think so is there anything else that you're reading watching or listening to oh i forgot about that um i watched uh planes fire and rescue today with my kids what's that about <laughs> it's like a pixar movie oh or, oh yeah i mean yeah. it's not really pixar but it's like you know walt disney studios animation yeah. pixar light <laughs> the, um, like planes is kind of like cars but yeah planes yep exactly it's like a spin-off but the mm -hmm. uh the kids you know is it, it was a rainy day today so it was oh it was such a crappy day it was but it's a perfect day to watch movies so Mm -hmm. um, we were like, let's watch a movie. And um, they picked out Planes, Fire, and Rescue. So we watched that in the home theater. And it was actually pretty fun. <laughs> Did you guys watch anything special with them for Halloween? I mean, I know they're still young, so it's not like they're going to be watching anything crazy. No, we were thinking about putting on the Charlie Brown thing, but mm -hmm. I'm not really into the Charlie Brown thing. I'm not either. Yeah. Like, I don't get excited for them. Me, I'm just like, yeah, He's... me neither. I'm not it's into like, it. It's a moving cartoon. I guess that's kind of fun to watch, but just the voices and even the animation. I don't know. I hate to hate on Charlie Brown because I know it's loved by so many people. But Yeah, we're going to get a lot of hate for that. There's a lot of better options, people. Come on. I agree. See the light. Watch Paranorman. Yeah. Now that, that's a I've good never Halloween seen movie. That. Oh, you got to see Paranorman. You, you know, no. Watch Avatar The Last Airbender. No, watch Sleepy Hollow. Now that is Fuck a Halloween yeah. movie. <laughs> the Johnny Depp one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tim Burton, Christopher Walken. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. into it. Yeah, yeah. That's I love it. One. Did you watch that this year? I wanted to really bad, but we just we couldn't fit it in. Too many other things. Oh, you! I think you mentioned to me that uh, Amy watched Hocus Pocus for the first time. She did, and she liked it. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, she had never seen it. So I was like, well, I guess we got to see it. And I, I always like to watch. It came out. What? Really? Yeah. yeah. So it, it was like oh. watching it for the first time because I barely remembered it. Like, I so remember. So, how did pieces. you feel about it? Because, you know, that's one of those movies. Like, I was talking to someone the other day and they were like, yeah, I finally watched it as an adult. I had, she grew up very religious. And so, like, this kind of movie was banned in her household. Yeah. Um, and she was like, yeah, I finally watched it as an adult. And it was okay, but I feel like it's one of those movies you have to watch as a kid. Kind of like how Dave felt about The Goonies. You do, but I think there's still a lot of redeeming qualities in it. The first half hour is dog shit. So if you watch just the first <laughs> half hour, you're just like, what is this? The writing's bad. The acting with the kids is terrible. Like uh, the plot's not good. But when the Sanderson sisters actually show up, yeah. they are so good that they blow well, they the movie out of the water. It. Yeah, they I mean, carry the movie. The movie is great, and uh, and the even like the physical and practical effects that they do, like them flying around on the brooms and all the work that they did with the visual effects, looks great. It looks I fantastic. Know. It still holds up. It holds up. It feels good, and I like. Yeah, it. one of my favorite movies when I was little was uh, Gandhi. <laughs> 
Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, I fucking oh watch Gandhi God. all the time. What? That and The Witches, which oh, did, which that. got a remastering or a re, yeah. you know, an update. Reboot. It got rebooted. Yeah. I don't, uh, I don't know if I like. I on one hand, I want to watch it because it's Anne Hathaway, but yeah. oh, the original was just the original amazing. was so dark. It was so, so dark good. and so scary. I watched the original too many times, and I was it was like one of those movies that I was weirdly drawn to, but like mm-hmm. it spooked the hell out of me. I was like, I don't like this, but I can't stop watching it, and I'd yeah. rewatch it. Yeah, yeah. My big ones when I was little was. The Witches, Gandhi, and Greece. Like Such those a are strange seriously... mix. <laughs> and the Borrowers. <laughs> those were the movies that, like, whenever we went down to my video one, mm. those were the movies I was renting. Yeah, my uh, when I was really young, I remember going to the local video store, and I would re-rent over and over. <laughs> the Cat from Outer Space. <laughs> <laughs> never saw that is it because you were allergic and you were like this is my only way i was i didn't even know i was allergic at the time i was probably like seven or eight years old maybe even younger and i was just like gotta have that cat and (laughs) cat from outer space and it it was like an old disney movie so it came in like the disney bubble you know vhs like oh yeah yeah. box and i used to just search for it and i'd be so mad if it was out like Like at that point why don't your parents just buy that that's what i always thought it's like at this point if i'm watching it this many times come on dad just fucking spring for the witches for me so back then so nana didn't have to drive all the way down to video (laughs) one Ba- back me. then i think i think vhs copies were really expensive oh like yeah? in the late 80s yeah like late 80s early 90s like i think it was like 50 bucks to 100 bucks for a vhs title what? yeah it was like nuts that's insane. yeah so that's why the rental companies were so big because you would pay four dollars to get it for the weekend or whatever but yeah you didn't want to really spend 50 to 100 dollars on the tape and it would take them forever to get them out to distribution too like it like you wouldn't get them on tape for like another year after they were in theaters. Oh yeah, that I, remember I remember waiting forever. I'd be like, yeah, when is that I thing going to come out? That. Yeah, that's hmm. crazy. Well, a couple other things I've been reading. Well, I so I finished a Court of Thorns and Roses that series. That's what I was reading mm-hmm. when we last recorded. Dave and I read it together, and it's amazing. I think Amy yep. would like it. I don't remember if you. I think I told you to recommend it. I, to her. Yeah, I recommended it to her. She's like, "Oh, I'll have to look into it." I don't know yeah. if she did or not. I didn't follow up. Um, and then Dave and I just finished the second season of Castle Rock, which actually came out last year, but for whatever reason, we just didn't watch it. Even though I liked season one. Yeah, I want to watch um, that. The show is awesome. Oh my god, it's executive produced by your favorite, your buddy JJ Abrams. JJ Abrams. Yeah. So yeah, that... that's not reason enough. Yep, I'm on board. Anything yeah. JJ. Yeah, it's I'm very all good, over. and it's not. They're not super long. I think it's ten episodes. Yeah. Per season. That's my kind of. That's my kind of season. Two seasons. So yep. yeah, it's good. You'll finish it pretty quickly. Cool. All right. Cool. All right. Well. You want to tell us where uh, where people can 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 subscribe and listen to us? Yeah, so you can listen and subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. And of course, don't forget to rate us five stars. That's the only correct rating for this podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, where else can they find us, Sammy? Well, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at KickStreamPod. And send us emails, but please no spoilers, uh, to kickstreampod at gmail.com. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Well, Pat, until next week. (laughs) What is this, Muzak? We have outro music. We don't need whatever this is. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is this is for um this is for Ellen and Brittany. They know who they are. Grr arg. What does that mean? Oh, you'll know. I will? Yeah. I'm not going to know. (laughs) (laughs) It's at the end of Buffy. (laughs) Uh, I think it's um, it's Mutant Enemy is the production company. I want to say some some company. 
And uh, so at the end of every Buffy, Buffy episode, it would end with like, you know, the mutant enemy. And it was this like little guy going across the screen and he would say, grr, arg. Oh, okay. So get through the credits next time you watch. <laughs> okay. Just fast forward, go to the end and, and then- Just the, for the grr, arg? Just for the grr, arg. But okay. that was at the end of every episode. Uh, okay. And so my friend Ellen said that she listened and was she was like, I, I, the only thing I'm disappointed is that I didn't hear a girl arc. Well, there <laughs> so you go. That's for you, Ellen. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Remember, kids, streaming is always better with friends. Boom. Boom.